Hello, good evening, good afternoon, good morning, good, good night, did I say that one already? Wherever you are on this beautiful flat earth, good time to you. I'm, uh, I'm being disappointed right now, very busy being disappointed. Um, I waited to paint this hand until I got this based on advice from some blog. Some artist was saying this is the best stuff to mix with Genesis paints. Here's the Genesis artist colors. This is a polymer clay that you bake in the oven. So uh, it works like oil paint, except you get to dry it within like five minutes by throwing it in the oven. Um, and the challenge I was trying to work on last time was how, um, how do, what's, what's the best material to thin it with? Because there are um, lots of ways you could thin it. Um, pretty much any polymer thinner stuff works. I used, uh, let's see, Fruit Loops here. It's probably not what FL stands for. I'm trying to trying to remember. Um, Grand Theft Monster, GTM. Hmm. Let's see. Do I know what any of these are? MS, multiple sclerosis. No, mineral spirits. Okay, this is mineral spirits. This is Sculpey clay softener. Yeah, so I, I tried all these different tests where I did it on different sides. And um, basically the thinner the substance that I mix the paint with, the more I was getting um, little, let's see if I can find a good example here. Ah, yes. I was getting little, let's focus. Let's see, can you see, see that little run of lines, the run of dots there? That's what I was getting because the pigment would, would, uh, well, the medium, the thinner, would evaporate out, leaving the pigment behind. But because it was so thin, it was leaving it in little things. Uh, so I, th I think, I think I can address that by mixing it better and mixing the thinners as well. If I have a little bit thicker of a, th a little bit thicker, thinner, does that make sense? Uh, that hopefully won't happen so much. Damon, yeah, sorry, I was, I was 10 minutes late. Um, the reason was because I, I had these in the oven and I wanted to just wait till they came out instead of like starting a stream and then two minutes later running to the oven and running back. So, um, JD, yo, Luis Ramirez, what's up? Um, so one of the problems I'm finding in general in all of the tests that I've done, I was testing it on this skin as well is I'm trying to do tinting but because it's so thinned out it's aggregating in aggregating is not the right word it's pooling in little cracks and that's not what I want the best way to do this would be to airbrush it honestly but I kind I don't want to do a tutorial on airbrushing uh, I really want to find a solution to this. One thing I was thinking is I could kind of uh, dry brush on there, and I should have been using uh, these surfaces to test that. Looks like I... Do I have any... Yeah, okay, so I have some... I have these two other surfaces to play with. I'm going to see if I can do a dry brush. So I'm still using this uh, Kato Polyclay, which also, it's called clear liquid polyclay, and it is absolutely not clear. It bakes clear, it is not clear unbaked, and that kind of makes color balancing uh, tricky because the white is going to uh, affect what I see before it's baked. Anyway, so I'm gonna, take paper towel R 
rub most of it off. So there's just a little bit of a residue. I, think I need to turn the white balance down real quick. No, oh, wrong way. No, that's the wrong way. There we go. Okay. Yeah, it's gonna look, look a little darker, but that's the only way you can pick up what I'm doing uh, with on such a light material. So. so I'm not sure what happens when I apply a blush to just the raised areas of a skin texture. don't know if that's going to be realistic or not. Ideally, it's exactly the same in the cracks and out of the cracks. Um, actually, I guess if I have it thinned this much. Um, hmm. So I, start, I started the dry brush, and then I'm starting to gently work it into the cracks, but it's so little pigment, it's getting spread really thin and that's not filling up the cracks. So that's good to know. Let me try a little more aggressive redness. Dottie, hello. Uh, Damon says, oh, forgive me, but just this once, don't let it happen again, mister. All right. I'll accept a finger wagging. Louise says, on that type of clay, is primer required before painting? Um, if you're going to do acrylics, then I recommend it. But this paint <clears throat> is specifically a, um, it's a polymer clay based paint. Well, it's polymer based paint. I guess it's not polymer clay based. Um, so it's going to bond super well to polymer. Um, so in this case, no. And I'm specifically using this technique because it allows me to, to just tint the surface rather than painting an opaque layer of paint over it. So I get to leverage the translucency of the, of the base uh, polymer clay. So it's more skin-like that way. Huh. Yeah, so this this seems to be a pretty good technique. Just using super, um, a super dry brush. I'm just gonna go super dry brush, done. Okay, I'm done talking. All the words have been said. Uh, so on this guy, you can see I got a lot of red like in the cracks. Let's see what happens if I brush over that with a little more red. This being my test piece, I feel free to do bold, crazy uh, tests. Yeah, it still doesn't keep the uh, keep the inner cracks from being too bright, so. That's good to know. The other thing I need to do is work out the um, the vein color that I want to use. My understanding is kind of a gray with just a hint of blue is what you want to do for veins. So if I take white and black, pretty sure that's a good way to make gray. Gonna use a little bottle cap to mix my little test here. JD says, "Is that test piece burned?" Yeah, I left this in the oven uh, on accident. Uh, I baked it at the proper temperature and then forgot it was in the oven, and it was in there for a couple days. I decided to make a meatloaf, and so I preheated the oven at 350. And then once smoke started coming out of the oven, I realized, oh yeah, that was still in there. 
Um, so that's not good. That's that's actually to uh, toxic fumes. When it burns, it's toxic. When it's just baking, it's not toxic. But um, yeah, so I toxified my oven. Um, hopefully my meatloaf doesn't end up killing me as a result. I still don't have a good idea for mixing this stuff. So I'll just keep doing this. Uh, that's probably way too much black. a bit light. Um, let's see what happens when I add the blue. Probably going to end up making it too blue. Yes. It's definitely too blue. So what I'm going to do Let's make another bit of gray. Ending up with a pretty nice slate blue. And I'm just going to give this a try. Yes, JD, I made smoke loaf. Exactly. Okay, so put just enough on my tip. I'm gonna brush almost all of it off. So there's only residue. Let's see what happens when I throw this on a vein. I think I needed a shorter bristle brush. This is not good for working the clay or the color back and forth very well. But I do think it's pretty spot on for the color. You guys are seeing it a little bit darker than I am due to the having to turn the um, white balance down. <laughs> yeah, pretty happy with that color. Okay, so I think I'm ready to just start tackling the final event. How exciting. Damon just finished making chocolate fudge. 20th batch. Wow. It's a lot of fudging. Damon Wonka. 
Yeah. All right. All right, all right, all right. Let's take his, his helmet off, hopefully without breaking it. I broke it. All right, that's fine. Oh, it actually pops on and off pretty well still. That's cool. Probably do some sanding on this guy uh, between bakes on this guy tonight. That is my hope. Okay. As always, uh, one of my one of my go-to rules that I keep coming back to. You, uh, when you're starting a new anything on your piece, do it on the least seen area, and that would be the palm in this case. So. I'm gonna go ahead. And, do I wanna stick with the Kato? It's giving me a fine tone. I'll probably end up doing some experimenting on the palm. I don't mind if it's not the best. Uh, like I've said before, I'm going to end up probably caking this in mud and dust anyway. So if I do something egregious over here, no harm, no foul. Oh, before I forget, let me grab some. Do I have it up here still? I don't think I do. Grab some translucent Sculpey. I need to patch the uh, little place where I where I um, uh, chiseled. That's not the right word. Carved. I carved through his fingernail in a previous episode. So I'm just gonna. Make a really small little blob right there. I don't know if you can see that, but there's a, a place where you can see the nail bed through there. So, actually, before I do that, oh my god, I had Kato Poly K clear. I already used it. I ordered another one for no reason. There's a Shyamalan twist for you. Uh, well, well, garbage. Wasted nine bucks or something. Getting just a itty bitty drop on there to make sure these two layers bond really well. get a little more red, a little more pigment. That's probably way too much. But I'll just poke, I'll nibble at it as needed. Hold on. Let me 
start my tutorial cameras. Okay, I got a clap to do a sound sync. Hi, Linda. a blend of about I don't even know probably 80% um, Kato clear liquid polyclay and 10 to 20% Genesis paint loading my brush up and now I'm just going to pull the vast majority of it off. First thing I want to accomplish is just a little bit of modeling, modeling. Right? Am I, is that with T's or is that with the D? I don't know if it's literally spelled like you model something. Mottled, like shadows, mottled, patterns on a dog. Someone tell me, how do you spell mottled in this context? A little more aggressive with this just by tapping it in the um, I got it on just the tips here what happens there okay getting some little red speckles and freckles just fine the more I do it the more they start to blend together into you can see what most skin has this very I don't know, it's almost like cottage cheese sort of variegation in the coloring. And also a lot of palms tend to be, well, uh, ca Caucasian palms tend to be a little redder than the rest of the hand, so I'm going to lean into that a bit. Getting the, getting the pigment to actually be consistent around all the little ridges and folds and stuff, that's, that's something I want to be very careful to make sure that I'm, that it looks like the same piece of skin that's being folded and not, I don't know, it just looks wrong if the, uh, the modeling doesn't go around the topology. Damon confirms mottled with T's. Excellent. Jinzo, hey, how you doing? You can already see how 
this t uh, technique is kind of covering up that weird uh, transition I had where I had some different types of uh, clay mixes uh, conflicting with each other there. got a dab of paint somewhere on my camera wire and since this stuff literally never dries at some point I'm going to rub a you know my white t-shirt across it that, that is the, that are the those are the rules that's how art works lies in wait for you when you least suspect it it jumps onto your clothes Starting to look like I'm almost doing a like a just a uniform form coat of uh, very desaturated red over this, but doing the dabbing is creating a a bit of modeling, modeling, modeling. Not, not sure how to say that in a way that doesn't sound angry that also uh, gets across the point that it's different than modeling. Damon says, should get an artist apron or smock. See, that's not the problem. When I'm doing art, that's not the problem. It's when something wet or sticky gets onto a piece of equipment that I use in non-art non applications or you know when I'm just cleaning the garage or whatever and then I end up or I'm walking through the garage to get something oh I gotta get the memory card out of my computer and then boom gotcha that's the kind of stealth surprise art attack I'm talking about There seems to be kind of a kind of a yellowish whitish spot in the middle area here where the red builds up more around the pads. So I'm gonna hit those with a little bit more saturated red. Or I could go in and um, paper towel away the red from the inside. Well, starting to think this red might be a little too aggressively red. A little too saturated for its own good. So, the beautiful thing about this Genesis paint is it will not dry, so you have all the time in the world to kind of go back and forth with it get it just where you want it. So I'm going to do some dabbing to pull some off. But 
again that leaves leaves more pigment in the crevices which is not really what I want Um, to clear out the crevices, I could very easily use, let's see, where's my uh, mineral spirits. Let me, let me wash this brush a little bit. There's some pigment in there, but it's so it's so diffused that it doesn't doesn't really make a difference for what I'm doing here. So I can take that a brush that's pretty much just mineral spirits and just wash where I want it to go, and that will definitely pull it uh, up and out of the cracks. Or well, it, it suspends the the pigment enough that then I can go in with a towel and suck it up and it comes out of the cracks especially if you use the tip of a paper towel in general I'm just kind of re just I'm because it's uh, got so much mineral spirits on it, it's pulling it out of the cracks and kind of redistributing it all around. That's pretty much what I'm trying to do. So. Damon says, obviously you should saran wrap everything every time when you are done. It's tricky when you're working on sculpture stuff. I don't think that's a practical solution. So, whenever I dab, I'm leaving it in the cracks, which gives it a really not real skin look. So, dabbing is maybe not the best, uh, not the best solution to this. Maybe just going in straight with the brush rather than using a paper towel, or maybe maybe it's uh, let's see. See what happens when I do brush first, paper towel second. That's probably the order of operations that is more appropriate. So basically you're uh, mobilizing all the little pigments and then you're sucking them away with the paper towel and through capillary action it gets pulled up uh, out from the cracks to a certain extent. Not as much as I'd like, but but more so. Kind of hmm. Now that it's in this state, I'm going to try the true uh, dry brushing. Oh. First, I'm going to get paint all over my brush, and then all over my fingers, and then accidentally all over my sculpture. Because those are the rules. Damien says, hose the garage down with Elmer's glue, then peel away when ready to start. Oh, there you go. 
Cherry Blossom Girl, hello. Uh, says, is this acrylic or oil paint? What kind of paint is best for polymer clay? Please pray. Okay, I will pray that you figure out what the answer to that is. I'm just kidding. This is this is a, a very original paint not many people know about. It's called Genesis. Uh, it is polymer clay paint. It's it's literally paint made with polymer, so it's exactly the same kind of stuff that the clay is made out of. And as a result, uh, it will bond perfectly to uh, polymer clay. And because it's polymer, you uh, in order to dry it, you bake it, which means it will stay liquid on your piece as long as you, as long as it's just sitting there. Dry brushing is harder to do when there's already some solvent on there, it looks like. Yeah, so you bake Genesis at around the same temperature as most polymers, around three or 270. You get away with pretty broad range, probably 250 would do the trick, I would guess. I'm going in with a brush that has less stuff on it is uh, doing a good job of pulling the paint out of the cracks that's good what's bad is I'm losing the modeling effect the modeling effect that I wanted so what if I do that so it's pretty it's pretty even coverage now so I'm gonna try going in with the mineral spirits Just like hit some areas, which will remobilize that pigment. Hmm. Hey, you're welcome, Cherry Blossom. Yeah, uh, most of the sculptures that I do, I um, I prime them with just a spray can of primer, and then I use acrylic paints. That's how I do stuff like this guy uh, that was done with primer and then acrylic paints. Um, but in this case, I'm trying to leverage the um, translucency of the clay, and so I just want to tint over the clay. So I'm using very thin washes of this Genesis paint. And it's so thin you can see through the paint to the clay underneath and that, that you know, the skin tone that I'm trying to achieve. I'm gonna go ahead. I think I'm satisfied that I'll I'll figure out how to get the the modeling right going over the rest of the skin as I go. So I'm just gonna go ahead and hit the rest of the hand. I'm using um, Kato Play Clay Clear Liquid Poly Clay as a thinner because the paint straight out of the tube is super, super saturated. Um, 
do my hand reference to kind of see, I think around, so before, so where bone is, is really close to the skin and the skin is stretching over. That's where it gets maximum kind of yellow ivory-ish. Um, and then under that knuckle part, it's, it's gets a little it look kind of darkish maroon, I would say. Um, and then evens out, and then you can see where it's going over that um, tendon there, really, really ivory again. But the back of the hand in general is looks like it's pretty, pretty uniformly modeled uh, red. So I'm going to go ahead and start there. And so the initial dabs were putting down uh, uh, little little bits that were that were far too saturated, but repeated dabbing is um, pulling that paint back up and putting it down in progressively lighter and lighter patches. I'm not gonna really worry about getting the, um, the yellows and ivories in there yet. I'm just kind of wanna get this the, the red distributed pretty well first. And then I'll go in and pull it up where I don't want it. JD says, does all colored polymer clay tend to get pigment on your hands, or is that only cheaper brands? Uh, no, the, the more saturated they are, I think they all, they all do that, as far as I know. Cherry Blossom says, admire your artwork so much, do you sculpt every day? Uh, not strictly every day. I would say probably most days. is a passion of mine. I think it's one of those things where if I'm sculpting less at work than I'm doing it more at home. Since I since I do video game design and art, there are, there are times that I go through where I'm more focused on design stuff and I'm doing less of the art stuff and that's probably when I'm more burning to do uh, sculpting at home. Scratch that itch, if you will. hoping to be able to do a pretty kind of consistent base uh, base coat I guess is what this would be over everything bake that and then go in and add more nuance to it
but it's tough because you start running out of places to hold on to the clay without getting paint all over your hand. So I might have to do, uh, do the hand part and then do the finger parts in another go, we'll see. I should have done this part last because I can do that while holding, or while it's sitting flat, right? In fact, hey, I forgot. I don't have to stand for this. I can just wipe off what I have. Only lost about 30 seconds worth of work there. But now I have this nice, strong handle I can hold do the rest of my dabbing so you can see as as I'm doing more of this I'm getting more bold with my color application because I'm more and more confident that I can spread it around as I as I need I'm not worried that uh, I can't fix a problem of having an oversaturated area Cherry Blossom says, do you ever have an artist block and how do you deal with it if you have it? Um, I think I don't have artist block because I have literally 50 projects going at any one time. And I always have an idea for at least one of them. Usually for about 20 of them all at the same time, so. So I don't know if that helps you, but. And uh, maybe it also helps that my projects are in a lot of very different fields. Like I write novels, I do graphic design work, I sculpt. I do game design work. Um, so yeah, there's just there's so many different projects and kinds of projects that yeah, there's just there's no way I could ever not have anything to do. Um, actually, okay, so I'm trying to think, there's, so if I sit down and I'm forced to 
work on one project. Yes, there are walls that I'll hit that I guess could be considered um, considered artist block or writer's block or whatever. Um, best way to deal with that. I mean, I guess that happens most frequently at work because at work, I, I'm also diversified at work, but not that much. Like, I do art and design, um, but I mean, it's usually on one, you know, one game at a time. I do tend to flit around. I shift modes a lot. Um, Actually, you know, something that I that I think probably does help in retrospect, I haven't really thought about it until you asked this question, but um, I think I maybe hit more dead ends before I had a, um, a physical workout routine. I think going to the gym and just kind of going through rote motions over and over again, you know, it changes your environment, it changes your headspace. And that probably provides opportunities for your brain to kind of reboot or, or you know, re-triangulate your problem. Having, having a balance in your life is... Um, I've found that having a balance in my life has been very important to uh, my growth in all areas of life as an artist, as a husband, as a father, as an employee. As a serial killer. No, wait, no, no, I, I don't take that back. I didn't say that. That's a pretty good base layer of modeling. Now I want to remove the, um, oh, hold on. My other camera doesn't like going more than 30 minutes. One sec. Sink. 
watch. Mind the clap. Cherry says, this is so interesting that you mentioned exercise. I remember I heard a TED talk a while ago where someone said the same thing. Sigh, maybe I'll start working out then. Lol at the serial killer. I ain't got time for serial killing, let me tell you. Like one or two killings tops and I am tapped out. I've got too many things to do. Um, I think I do need a little more. Ah, crap, I got a little bit of blue on the nail there. I don't... Probably have to carve that away. One thing I've seen a lot of artists do that usually looks pretty good is the tips of the fingers will be red, more red, and they'll just kind of feather that red back to neutral as the, as the finger gets closer to the hand. JD, you caught me. It looks so realistic because it is a real hand. Da da da. I just happened to find a mutant that has a super stumpy thumb. It was like, how can I use a real person's disembodied hand? but still make it look like it's art. Oh, I know, I'll find a deformed person. Take their hand.
got a little too aggressive with the red there. No problem. Just clean my brush. Go in and redistribute it. It's a little redder just before the knuckles. And then, I think I'll use a new paper towel for this part. JD says, guess where the rest of them went? It was the meatloaf. Oh my god. Damon says, I must have a huge oven. Yeah, that would be a pretty hefty oven to hold a whole person. So conveniently, the highlights are the area where the skin gets the most, um, you know, where it's pulled the tightest is where it gets the lightest. And so it's very easy to just rub over the sculpture and I'm naturally gonna be rubbing the high points of it. Uh, it is still leaving some pigment in those cracks a little bit, but I don't think it's enough that it's going to be a problem. I think, I think if I go in with some uh, mineral spirits, I can brush those away pretty easily. And since I'm trying to get a modeled look anyway, the fact that it's pushing the paint into into weird little splotches that's actually good so it's good when things are good at least i like them that way speck of something on there. Problem solved. Damon says, you'll have to post a pic on Twitter or something when you're done. Still looks to me like you're painting a 10 mile orange. I'm sure it's just the lighting. Uh, yeah, let me, let me show you when I turn up the white balance to where it looks 
Okay, so that's that's a little closer to what I'm seeing. I don't know if that helps you at all, but it just it doesn't help you see where the pigment that I'm painting is actually going. Brush off the veins, the tendons. I'm going to mix a little bit of um, maroon. Well, I'm going to mix a little bit of black and to my red. To make some dark blood. want to use um, pure red for blood. That is how you get really fake looking blood.
happens when I thin it down with uh, mineral spirits quite a bit. Let's see if I can get a drip. Yeah, not a good drip. I may just go in with acrylic paint to do the to do the blood. Let's see how well how good this looks after um, after it's baked. Can you guys guess what uh, bit this uh, wonderful hand steed right in the neck? I'm trying to get just a general irritated uh, look around the bite mark more than like fresh blood spewing or anything. Shady says, I like Q-tips for pulling paint out of crevices. That didn't sound right. Um, have I tried Q-tips? I feel like I have. Notice I'm, I'm trying really hard not to overdo the blood. I'm not really trying to make a super gory thing. I just wanted to look, you know, battle damaged. The gore kind of, it's, the concept itself is gory enough that I don't feel the need to like put blood, you know, spattering and smearing everywhere. see how incredibly opaque the paint is like it just it goes over that black effortlessly David says something with very round wide spaced spiky teeth so a gang of vampires or a mimic or a feral barrel wow a feral barrel never thought of that hey Demi you're up early or late or something
Jerry says, what is the intro music to your videos? Um, it depends. I have different music for different videos. My Colossus videos are um, I commissioned a guy to make a, uh, a medley of Colossus music, Shadow of the Colossus music, uh, with, uh, you know, like a metal version. And my regular ones is another piece I commissioned. Uh, I was Previously, I was using a band called Ovid's Withering, um, their music for the intro, and I thought it was super perfect and I loved it, but um, YouTube kept taking my monetization, even though I had an agreement with the people in the band to be able to use it, uh, the YouTube algorithm disagreed. and. Uh, so I had to get something new. So I got something that was pretty close to the theme. And it was just uh, just another musician I know. Okay, now I gotta figure out how to get all this red off of there. I think I can probably just dilute it down and it'll run all over the uh, all over the rest of the hand but I, I don't think that's a problem so I need something short bristled and hard I think this will do the trick Me up for work. All right. Uh, the red is pooling in all the little um, cracks that I have in the in the stopper there, so I need to just suck that out with my paper towel. I suppose I could use a Q-tip. Now I'm just using this uh, stiff brush uh, that's pretty wet with mineral spirits 
and I'm scraping across the sculptural detail in there to kind of bring out the highlights. Don't need to overdo it. guy. Go back and touch this guy up. He says, I missed the last few because they were on 3 or 4 a.m. my time. I'd wake up and see missed another. Haha. <laughs> I still watch them later, though. That's good. Yeah, I, I wish I could do a more varied schedule. I need my full-time job. Okay, just, now I'm just checking to see if there's any areas that really stand out as being ridiculously saturated red. Should also rub off my little um, little magical plate dealies. They're going to have gems on them. It'll be easy on the next round to go in and I can I can add more red anytime I want. But once it's baked, it's it's probably I'm guessing not easy if possible at all to get rid of the red without painting over it with opaque, which I would like to avoid. 
the uh, the bone you can see if you see it at the right angle can you see it huh it's it's hard with this uh, white balance but there's take my word for it there's a little white bone in there and I want a little bit of that white showing but not quite that much Oh yeah, that was perfect. Going in with a little bit of um, uh, mineral spirits. Not only does that did that get the paint over the bone without completely eradicating the white, but it breaks up the the blood color in there in a really really nice realistic way. Okay. I think I'm about ready to throw this guy in the oven for his first bake. Uh, where's the foil? Oh, foiled again. Okay, I'm gonna get another foil sheet. One sec. Okay, so this guy only needs to go into the oven for five minutes to solidify the paint. So I'll throw him in and be right back. And while he's doing his thing, uh, I'm going to work on the helmet. Which, where did my helmet get off to? Well, helmet, where did I hide the... not have got far. There it is. Right where it can get crushed accidentally. Okay. This little tool that I have not used much yet. It's a this little vibrating sander with nice teeny tiny little heads of various shapes. Sorry if this gets loud.
wish I could adjust how how much it vibrates. If you couldn't hear me, I said I wish I could adjust how much it vibrates. I don't think there's a way to do that. It's doing a great job of uh, getting my, getting the, um, the planes that I want. Let's see if there's a better head. Oh wow, that is what a great little system. Looks like there's different roughnesses. Let's see. Oh, here we go. 180. Very nice. Damon, yeah, I have a Dremel. Uh, this is cool because does just a nice flat uh, surfacing. Dremels spin, which means you're limited to discs that go in that direction, which doesn't lend itself well to doing planes. Wow, it's, uh, this is super great for doing little tapers like this.
Ow. <laughs> that was more of a startle owl than an actual pain owl. Is that a real one? What? Let's see how the circle bit treats me. Also, hello, Dottie. Don't worry, I have not forgotten. Just wrapping this up. I think I'm going to have to do another pass on the uh, sculpting. There's a few angles I can't quite get through the sanding. I think I want the. Uh, the eye ridge here to be on the same plane all the way up to the bridge of the nose like that and there's just there's this divot here no matter how much I sand this down it's gonna end up taking that whole thing off if I match it so I need to fill in a little bit there I just want to make sure I'm getting the eyes 
uh, symmetrical enough. Just as a note on oven length, I have uh, baked the Genesis paints onto a sculpture, an unbaked sculpture before. So I had the sculpture in for 20 minutes or half an hour with the paint on, and it did not adversely affect the paint in any way that I could tell. So I'm not worried about it burning or overcooking for the 15 or 20 minutes I'm working on this guy. put this somewhere where I will remember, such as with all the other accoutrements. Sweep that stuff off than I thought it would be. Okay, getting the stuff out of the oven. Be right back. Trying to find a 
good white balance to kind of see what it looks like to me. Maybe right around there. Demon says, don't forget meteor shower right now. There's a meteor shower or I need to cast the spell. So I think, yeah, that's pretty, pretty, eh. this does not look as red as it, or it, lo it looks more red on camera than it looks in real life. It's too saturated. Sure, how to tell my I can tell my camera to be lighter or darker. I don't know how to tell it to be less saturated. Randall, you're saying it looks groovy. Good. Uh, Damon says the annual uh, Geminids meteor shower peaks tonight. Oh, I did not know that. Um, I do not live anywhere where I'd be able to see. <laughs> said meteor shower sadly I would have to drive for like three hours which uh, I can't do right now um, so one thing I am seeing is that I do have in the areas where I use the um, the mineral spirits to thin it and spread it around, I did get, uh, let me record this, where's record on you, there you are, okay, so, in the areas where I thinned it with mineral spirits, I got, um, accumulation in the cracks, which is not good, Makes it look like there's a bunch of paper clips, not paper clips, paper cuts uh, all over it, which is, which is not the look I'm going for. Um, I kind of like the way this, this blood actually looks just like that. It kind of looks like it, the wound happened and like it got rubbed around through more tussling or whatever, and it's, it's fine like that. Uh, the palm definitely still looks a, like a different material. Again, I'll hide that with uh, dirt and dust. Um, so I think, let's see, the question is, do I do dirt and dust uh, with this or do I, so guessing probably the best technique would be to do the same thing that I did on here which was to use some some pigment some powdered pigment and spatter it on and, and rub it around and stuff rather than trying to accomplish it with Genesis paints um, so if I'm gonna leave that to that process I guess really the only thing I need to do is veins and fingernails. Yeah. Well, you know, I'll I'll do that right now and see how it looks. I think I'll start with fingernails because it's it's easy to hold the piece like this, um, and. Uh, do the fingernails because if I do the fingernails first or if I do the veins first I'm gonna have to hold this really awkward ways to avoid getting the veins so fingernails yay you, uh, you can see where I uh, patched this part of the fingernail it does look a little a little different See what happens if I do a little carving on it. Uh, 
because I ended up carving down all the nails, so it would make sense that if I want it to match, I need to kind of carve it too. Another thing to note, because this was just in the oven, the clays all softened up again. Not, not all softened, but uh, it's more flexible, so I need to be careful. I can't put a lot of pressure on it right now. Which I don't think that I will doing uh, nail painting. I think I'm safe. So this piece I did the practice uh, nail color on. I used probably too, uh, like like a brownish yellow. And it's probably a little too saturated. I may have used may have used this kind of tanny brown. It's hard to tell because the uh, palette is orangey copper. Uh, let me just try try a thing real quick. I guess I'll I guess in this case I actually do want the color to seep into the cracks. Um, it's not like on the skin, so probably work out fine. Even with Seattle's glow, some would still show unless it's cloudy. Yeah, I'm not going to stop a stream, though. If it's still going after the stream, I'll check it out. need a new a new thing of mineral spirits that's not tainted where all my cosmetology training will be put to the test yeah we're talking about uh, the cosmos and we're talking about nails so cosmetology great to evoke right here let's see. need a brush that's small enough to be able to get into angles but I don't want it to be too small this will probably work night long okay I'm gonna start on the pinky nail because that's the one you see the least Nice and subtle. Might end up being too subtle. But. Definitely need some some good dirt build up underneath the nails since its nails are double as hooves.
some brown under the nails should look good. Yep. Yeah, Demi, uh, if you know of any, you know, lady friends that might want this look, you know, or you yourself, maybe you could um, fly me out there and, you know, put me up in a hotel and I'll be happy to paint you and your girlfriend's nails complimentary of me. All you got to do is fly me out there and put me in a hotel for, I don't know, a week? Does that sound fair? So now that I got a base coat down, just gonna pull off of the highlights. Think of the trend you could start, Demi, of ladies looking like uh, they have magical disembodied corpse hand controlled by wizard look. I kind of feel like that's pretty much that's pretty much it. Like like the rest of the grime and dirt I'm gonna do with um, with acrylic pigments. So it's pretty good for that. I think I'm gonna actually hit around some of the knuckles with a little more um, purpley, maroony red. So I'm gonna take a touch of this red I already have. Grab just the tiniest bit of blue. a squidge more. I'm gonna have some of this clear on hand. Clear slash white on hand. A week or two. Dirty fingernail look is all the rage this season. Yeah, that's what I'm hoping. All right. So specifically, I want to get this maroon around the base of the knuckles. Creeping up onto the back of them seems to be where it likes to go. This is perfect uh, painting disembodied wizard mount hand music. It's probably what it was written for. It's probably what the song is called. Disembodied wizard hand mount part three.
think this will be effective at ameliorating my um, paper cut land. Howdy, so did you tell us what made the bite mark on the finger, or did I miss that? Now, I was hoping someone would give me a great answer. Right now, I'm feeling like some sort of serpent monster. You know, so it's like, it's got a serpent-like mouth, maybe more of a lizard than, uh, than a snake, since snakes tend to have just like those two big puncturing teeth. Oh, although I do have another answer for you, Dottie, which was you, you were asking uh, what my favorite song was. I have a favorite song now. It is uh, track number three. I can't remember what it's called. Machine or, uh, or Mega Weapon or Shooty Laser or something like that. But yeah, definitely track number three. JD says maybe he bit himself for realistic effect. Oh, that would be an interesting twist. I'm not, not happy with this red, which actually looks way better uh, when it's oversaturated, so, as it does on the screen, but not in real life. Do I mean firepower? Yes, firepower, that's the track. What about the three-headed dog that protects the gates of the underworld? Cer Cerberus? That sounds good. Maybe maybe the hand wizard was trying to break into the underworld. I'm just gonna grab some of this um, really saturated red. See what happens. Hey, this got so diluted by the um, yeah, that's, that's too red. It got so saturated by the um, mineral spirits that uh, it sucked all the life out of it. So I think I'm going to add some areas where it gets a little more red. And then I'll go in with a darker red to. It's always good for things to not be completely uniform. Very things, very few things in nature are completely uniform.
now scrub this off. I'm gonna hold it upside down so that the drips go the other way and don't um, don't dilute the paint this time. All right, looks better on my end. It looks super oversaturated on your end. Apologize for that. Okay, veins. Gonna go next. One thing I dislike about this camera is telling it to record takes like three button presses before it's actually recording. Okay, got a sound sync again. Uh, what kind of gems am I putting on the gold plates? I'm putting these guys on. Ah. Kind of like be kind of like that, but without the needle sticking out the top. Mermoli phallix. Been meaning to catch one of these for a while. Hey, I'm glad you did. Uh, Merm, that's what I'm going to call you, Merm. What camera am I using to stream? Um, I'm using a Lumix. Uh, what is this? It's a, I don't know, it's my new camera. I just bought it. It's awesome. Everything about it is awesome, except pressing down the thing is hard. And I, had, and I don't know how to make it um, not oversaturated when I turn the white balance down. Once I figure those things out, um, I will be set. Okay, I had a brush that had the, oh, I think I was using it for this. But that's fine. I want a smaller brush anyway. Yeah, I think this is perfect. Okay, now I'm using blue that I mixed from where'd it go? Where are you, Blue? Oh. Alright, so I used Phalo Blue 01 and mixed it with gray to end up with this 
slate blue, which to you looks a little more sky blue, but take my word for it, slate blue. And gonna go in, really subtle at first, hopefully. We'll see if I can pull off subtle. viewer is not going to see first. It might be a little bit too subtle, but one thing I've noticed is if you wet the sculpt first and then go in with your color, it'll it'll mix out better. So this, this vein right here, it's traveling through this uh, fold and I'm positing that it's coming out down here. It, it goes, it, as veins do, they kind of weave in and out of the tissue and so I'm saying it went down and under and you're just kind of seeing a hint of it coming out the other side of that fold over here. I need to make it really subtle since there's no actual um, sculpting bump to uh, to back up that assertion. I think I was having more luck mixing. Um, Rather than um, mineral spirits, uh, thinning it with you know, the Kato. In fact, I should just give myself a little puddle of Kato somewhere, clean Kato. Put it over here. Oh, Vic Green says, hey, did you say that was mineral spirits you're using to wipe off that acrylic paint? I did say mineral spirits, but this is not acrylic paint. This is a Genesis poly, polymer based paint. So this paint works like oil paints, um, except you can bake it to make it hard or to, to dry it essentially.
So places where the vein is bumping up and over um, the structure underneath the hand is where I want the uh, blue to be most uh, apparent. still definitely do not want it to be to have more blue in the the skin cracks that is very bad that ruins the illusion do these little circuits before the first knuckle on most fingers. Um, I made a design decision that I'm not super happy with. To, once, I, once I dedicated myself to making the, uh, the magical system that these hands are controlled by be the, the gauntlet and then put the, put the little gems on every finger that really mucks with the flow of a hand. And so there's elements that could have been cooler if, um, if those weren't there. But I think I'm, I like the idea so much of controlling the hand this way and, and having that visually represented that I was willing to make that sacrifice. See if that's all the veins. I think this might actually be a vein too. Marm says that description of the paint sounds amazing. Have to look that up. How easy is it to thin? Uh, that's that's what I've been messing with. If you check out the last uh, stream that I did, you'll see all the different experiments that I was trying. Um, there's there's a lot of ways to thin it. The way I'm doing it now is with this this Kato uh, stuff. Um, there's actually a thinner you can get with it that's just a and there's a couple different thicknesses of that thinner. So there's there's a lot uh, you can play with in the variables. But yeah, what I love about it is just how, what a breeze it is to just blend into the material around it. You don't need to, like normally I would think you would need an airbrush to achieve these kind of blends, but this stuff, it's pretty easy. I, I put a link to the, the company um, in the description of this video, so should be able to find it. I, thought, I don't know if they sell it directly or if you have to go to a distributor. I don't remember. It was many, many years ago that I got all my paints.
All right. Uh, now I'm looking for other veins I can put in there. Guess what's great for that reference. So there's this whole network that runs around here that I think I want to kind of put in there. So there's definitely one that goes over here. Fat Cat, hey, how's it going? It says, I'm sculpting a dragon egg project. Not nearly as cool or the same thing as what you're doing, but it's what I can do, lol. Hey man, if you're having fun doing art, that is awesome. Are you doing a Game of Thrones dragon egg? It's an amazing one made out of metal. A video of someone doing that. Trying to be careful not to have anywhere where it's just like one blob brush stroke. Because that'll end up with a hard edge on accident. I was trying to do that one. I just moved it over there a little bit. Mm. up there. I got a neighbor that does um, 
that does hair for Game of Thrones. She flies out to Ireland every year to do that. these guys too. These are very major veins. I don't know if they count as arteries by the time they get down there. big one that goes along pretty much follows this um, uh, da, 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 da. it is called a tendon there we go got it out Probably the same one that ends up coming out here, in fact. Yeah, see, I'm just it's basically smudging it around, and it just totally sells the illusion of subdermal vein. I mean, hopefully all veins are subdermal, but... If your veins are no longer subdermal, I suggest seeking medical attention immediately. This one I may have diffused a little bit too much, like it's too it's too broad and faded. I'm just gonna try just try pulling it up with my finger. Seems to be doing a good job.
Let me see if there's a good opportunity to put a hero vein in here. This is probably still the best spot. Places where the skin is stretched really tight seem like a really good place to get some of those little thin ones that you wouldn't normally see. Demi says, Let's see, I've seen you work with resin before on here. Can I ask you something, or you rather not mix the topics on the stream? Um, no, I'm totally open to mixing anything, anywhere, anytime. Alitha says, a hand looks like my cat got a hold of it. Yep. This is what happens when you have cats, your hands end up looking just like this. happy with what's going on with this red down here. Oh yeah, that reminds me I need to rub some of these highlights back in.
Alright, I think the last little touch I want to give is um, some little kind of liver spot looking things. So let's start back here. Uh, Demi says, bought resin for crafters, which is about $25 for 250 mil. Now, I found another resin in a hardware store for pro use, also 25 but for one liter. Are crafter things just so overpriced? And how important is the UV resistance in the resin? How quickly will it go yellow when exposed to sunlight? Uh, that is, like, such a huge field in and of itself like that's getting into material sciences and there's so many companies that make so many resins for so many specific purposes oh man I could not I would not be able to help you um like each brand of um places that that make resin usually make like 30 or 40 different types all for very specific applications so It took me years to get to the point where I could reliably produce what I was trying to produce with like molding and resin and stuff like that. So I use um, Smooth On products. I, I know they're available around the world. I don't know how easily accessible they are, you know, to everyone all the time, but. Um, they have a great website and really great tutorials and they tell you exactly what each um, product is intended for. I'm trying to do a little bit of just skin imperfections. I'm not trying to make it look like it's super old man covered in liver spots, but I'd much rather be too subtle with this than over the top. It's always easy to go in and add later if I, if I feel like it really needs it. See what happens if I do a dark brown like a mole. By Rally's TV says electricity wind. Hmm, I don't know what that means. To me says, all right, so I shouldn't assume that it will work exactly the way as the crafter resin. Yeah, no idea. Like, and also the, the mold material that you use um, will have will make a difference. Um, there's compatibility, potential compa compa compatibility problems. Oh. So yeah, that's why I try, I try to stick with one brand that has good, you know, tutorials and customer feedback, which means I, I don't buy anything locally, unfortunately. I would love to 
There is one place that sells Smooth On products fairly close to me, but um, not usually exactly the the exact products that I want. Mm. That looks like a pretty good mole to me. Don't know if I want any more or not. Maybe right. Freckle. Yeah, and I think I'm just going to leave the, the underside as it is because I'm going to be dusting it all up. And I guess, I think that's about all. Let's go to. Um, more closer to what it actually looks like, Cam. Ugh. Yeah, I've got to figure out the saturation on this thing. I mean, I'll, I'll have to figure it out for when I, you know, do post this tutorial, obviously. So. that'll do it for tonight um boy it sure would be great if i finished this before the next stream wouldn't it and we could do something uh totally different that'd be rad demisa shipping is so expensive to get it here unfortunately sometimes costs as much as the product itself yeah that's um that's awful and it's uh, actually shipping in the US that those kind of products are ridiculously expensive so I don't feel the pain to your extent but I definitely feel it I used to live in Alaska, and that place certainly did not have an excess in uh, very specific art supplies, and shipping was ridiculously expensive as well. So I know them feels. Yeah, I'm going to call it, and uh, hopefully see you guys this weekend. If not, definitely next Wednesday. Thanks for stopping by for two hours and 51 minutes and 51 seconds. And uh, we'll see you all next time. Have a good night.